you, you gotta, gotta eat here. here. Toast is one of the coolest breakfast spots in Metro Detroit area. They deep fry the French toast. We saved the bacon fat, it's like fat guy olive oil pretty much. Excellent way to start your day. I love the Barley Vine Rail Company. They do great comfort food. Do it. <laughs> do it. You can pour that directly into my mouth. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> the senator is Toronto. Delicious classic diner food. Oh my god. This is the best fried chicken I've ever had. Plate licking good. That's what this chicken is. I'm John Catucci. Listen, I'm no chef, but I know great food when I eat it. And these joints are cooking it right. That's why I'm telling you, you gotta eat here. Morning time with a D, you need breakfast. Come to Toast in Ferndale, just outside of Detroit. What about French toast with flambéed bourbon brown butter sauce? What's that? You want candied bacon too? Of course you do. You gotta eat here. These guys are the originators of the Ferndale breakfast movement. Unusual menu, a little on a unique side. If you've not eaten here, you've missed something special here in Ferndale, Michigan. Really fresh ingredients, yeah, it's a hit. Tom's bomb up in the window. I love this omelet. Yeah. Nice little zip with the chorizo, queso fresca, and then it's topped off with some corn salsa, like a party in nice. your mouth. Nova Scotia Benny in the window. The salmon done over with the poached eggs. With a really nice hollandaise sauce. A little smoky flavor, it's just perfect. B Street French Toast. They deep fry the French toast, something I've never had before. I love the candied bacon. <laughs> They're almost like nuts. The sauce is one of the best, a little walnuts. It's deep fried candied bacon. Oh my goodness, it's candied bacon. Toast were a breakfast and lunch joint in uh, Metro Detroit area. It's a uh, street, it's funky, it's hip. What's our first dish that we're making today? We're making something called the B Street French Toast. The first preparation is bourbon and brown butter sauce. First step, take brown sugar, water, caramelize this all down, and then in a separate pot, get this butter brown and off. Whisk in this cream, and now we add this mixture to the caramelized sugar. Next, we get our pan smoking hot, flame off the bourbon. Not our eyebrows. Add the booze right to the sauce. So next step would be? Making candy bacon. Take center cut bacon, let it render out. We save the bacon fat, it's a hot commodity. It's like fat guy olive oil, pretty much. But now return it to the pan and do the simple syrup. Sugar and a little water. Boil this for a couple minutes. Let's fry this bacon. That makes sense. Why wouldn't it? Why would not you do that? 20 seconds in here, and then we're going to pull it out. Awesome. All right, so now oh, you got beautiful. a little crispy candy bacon. Season it with sugar, like little bacon treats. And that's candy bacon. I like this. What's next? We're making French toast now. Let's do that. Some cracked eggs, mix in some cream, powdered sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and vanilla extract. Dunkery with our baguettes. Get it all nice and wet. And then we're gonna take it right to the fry. And those fry up for how long? Four minutes right. until the bread gets real puffy. Our cinnamon sugar, a little toss, and then go to plate. Oh, Banana. Then the bacon, the sauce that we made earlier. That's the B Street French toast. Sheer perfection. Crispy on the outside, but still soft, tender on the inside. With the bananas and the bacon, it's just like a perfect amount of salty and sweet. Dig in, man. Mm. Oh, that's pretty yummy. It's got a little bit of a crunch on the outside, but it's still got that soft, chewy center. And you got that brown butter sauce with the bourbon in there as well. That candy bacon is right there. It's like salty, sweet, smoky. I like this. Excellent way to start your day. Toast is one of the coolest breakfast spots in Metro Detroit area. The service is great. I don't think I could have a better place to come and eat. Biscuit and gravy in the window. Nice, firm omelet, sausage in there. The biscuits just fall apart. Cheese melts through it, but it's all in the gravy. Chicken waffle. What do you have in front of you? Chicken Benny with waffles. Fried chicken with maple syrup. It's so good, especially when the poached egg breaks open and gets all nice and gooey. Mm. Delicious. Got a beak goes out in the window. Nice fluffy omelet. The goat cheese, melty, delicious. Oh. Golden and red beets with a little balsamic. The killer part here is the grit. Describe grits to me. Like a weird, grainy mashed potato. Oatmeal-y. They're delicious, though. Next dish is uh, beet goes on omelet. We're making grits first. Okay, grits are? It's a white cornmeal mixture, like a Southern American kind okay. of thing. Add the milk and water, and now the grits. We'll let those simmer in 20 minutes. Okay, cool. We'll get the beets going in the oven. Red and yellow beets, a little olive oil, salt. And that cooks for how long? Four hours. Okay, cool. Next, we're gonna make our uh, orange balsamic glaze. Some aged balsamic vinegar and orange juice. Take this all the way down to a glaze. That takes seven minutes. Kind of coats the back of the spoon there. We need that to cool for a little bit. Okay. We need another thing to cool, which is the beets, because they're done too. Okay. We're gonna finish off our grits, Parmesan cheese, cracked pepper, butter. And those will be done. Sweet.
Now we got some chilled out beets. Give it a nice little small dice. It's time to make this omelet. Clarified butter. Take our beets, caramelized onions, baby arugula. Give Very it a quick cool. saute. Grab the eggs, give it a good flip. A little bit of chef cheese. Go cheese. Set this up in the salamander to melt. You wanna go grab the toast? I will do that. The omelet's done now. Okay. Toast, grits, Parmesan chip, which is just Parmesan cheese on the grills, orange balsamic glaze, microgreens, and there's the beet goes on. <laughs> The beets bring a tangy sweetness. The goat cheese kind of balances it out. Killer grits. Creamy and taste the cheese. I'm going to kill it. Mmm. Oh, he did the whips. You get a oh. little <laughs> three of them I give you. I love the earthiness from the beets and just the tanginess that comes from that goat cheese. Sweetness from the onions and the balsamic reduction. That's really, really nice, man. Okay, I got to do some of the grits. Yeah! The grits are so creamy, the saltiness from the Parmesan, and then you get another nice little hit from the Parmesan crisp. I will eat this strip all day. Stop in here. Where are you gonna get a beet omelet? Come on. I love toast. It's changed Ferndale as we knew it before. A great community feel here. Nothing beats it. No amount of French toast. You taste the blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, the nut, and the yogurt all at once. So imagine an explosion coming. <laughs> Corned beef hash in the window. The corned beef, the eggs, and the peppers. Kudos to the chef. Breakfast burrito in the window. The biggest breakfast burrito that I've ever had. It's got chorizo, black beans, scrambled eggs, cheddar cheese, and these tortilla strips. Love it. Last dish of the day is our breakfast burrito. We're gonna make chorizo. We got Berkshire pork butt, and then we're gonna add our spices. Paprika, chili powder, garlic powder, oregano, cumin, salt, finely, sherry vinegar. I'd say it's good. Refrigerate for 24 hours. The next step, we wanna make the green chili sauce. Olive oil, onions, green peppers, garlic. Add our pre-roasted peppers. Poblanos, jalapenos, tomatillos. The last step, lime juice. That's pretty much finished. Take our immersion blender, add cilantro. Now we're ready to cook the insides of the burrito. Nice. Clarified butter for chorizo that yeah. we prepared already. Put it through a meat grinder. Black beans and pinto beans. Chili powder and cumin mix in here. Mexican hot sauce. Oh. Put the eggs in. Cheddar cheese. Beautiful. Green chili sauce. Give it a little reheat. Flour tortilla. It's going to be a fatty. That is a big one. So we got that. Our green chili sauce. Cheddar cheese. Go right to Sally the milk. You just got in there. Good to go. Get it right on the plate there. Sour cream. Crispy tortilla chips. I like this. Guacamole. Red tomato salsa. Meat chili. I'm going to put this as a side. There's our breakfast burrito. Beautiful. Mm, yeah. Very savory. A little smokiness to it. A little bit of spice. Not too much. Go for it, man. Mmm. That's a really yummy burrito. Those beans just mixing in with the eggs. The chorizo is just so nice. You get the chili in there, you get the paprika in there. Mmm. The green chili sauce, it's got some heat, but it's also got some like brightness that comes through it. It doesn't matter what side of the border you butter your toast, it's always delicious. You gotta eat here. Tell them. You gotta eat here. Cool as a cucumber. Tell me about the Barley Vine Rail Company. Canadian comfort food, but they elevate it. Bacon wrap meatloaf. How many times have you had this dish? This month? This week? It's a lot. This is going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. Here. Is there anything more perfect than a pierogi? Little dough pillows stuffed with mashed potatoes. Yum. The Barley Vine Rail Company has made pierogies even more better. How? They stuffed them with pork belly. I'm on board. You gotta eat here. They bring something different to comfort food. Makes you feel really good, but it's got that modern edge to it. Yeah. Food's local, chef is talented. It's a local gem. Perch up. What are you having for you? Beer batter perch. It's crispy, but it's not too heavily battered. It's delicious. Picking up one burger. I got the beef burger with the duck fat fries. The beef is from a local farm. You can taste that meaty duck flavor in the fries. It's rich, it's delicious. One pierogi. Pork belly pierogies. They're fried, which yeah. gives them a nice crispiness, and then the pork inside of them. Oh. We're here at the Barley Vine Rail Company, an old railway station that has been moved to this location. We're getting all sorts of produce from local farmers. First up, yeah. we are making pork belly pierogies. We're going to make some dough. Start with flour and baking powder, salt, eggs, water. We just let the dough come together. Dust the counter off. I think this dough needs you. <sighs> and that should be good. That's the last stop. And let it rest in the fridge for a good half hour. So this is our pork belly. We braise this overnight with some seasoned chicken stock. First step, dice the pork belly. Next up, ricing potatoes. Good old ricer. There won't be any lumps in this filling. Start with some buttermilk, butter, some salt and pepper, and pork belly. Some thyme leaves. From here, we are going to make our dough. Dough has sat for a bit. We're going to roll it out now. You just put more, you put more <laughs> flour by doing that. Start cutting these. Got our little round discs now. A small spoonful and just drop them right in the center of the pierogi. Fold and pinch in the center. I got a bit of a squish back. 
That was not so nice. Quick dip in flour, make sure the seal stays. That's an awesome pierogi. We are going to blanch these. Salted water, they're looking good right now. Next up, searing some pierogies. Vegetable oil, butter, drop five pierogies. Give them a little color on one side. Yeah. We're gonna flip them and they're gonna be nice and crispy. Next step, duck fat french fries. This is our deep fryer devoted exclusively to duck fat. I like you. <laughs> fries are good to go. Our ranch sauce. The base is a roasted garlic mayo, some sour cream, and buttermilk, and pork belly pierogies. Crispy shallots, and some salad. So this is our pork belly pierogies with duck fat french fries. A really crispy outer shell. The filling is smooth and creamy. The ranch dressing just brings the pierogi to another level. That duck fat, oh, so flavorful. You got a nice crisp to the outside, but the inside is still so tender. And just those full-on bites of the pork belly are so delicious. And that ranch dressing just kills it. There's a tanginess punch to it. Let's do some duck fat fries. Holy. <laughs> it's got such a strong flavor, the duck fat, but it's so yummy. That's a good meal. Everything a comfort food should be, and then some. I love the Barley Vine Rail Company. It's right downtown Orangeville. The staff and the food are phenomenal. Coffee chicken wings. These wings, they're unreal. They cook them slowly so that the meat's falling apart. Then they deep fry them. I love the side sauces. Ranch or blue cheese. Perfect. Wild leaf risotto. Mmm, sweet and delicious and creamy. It's to die for. Got one bacon wrap meatloaf. The meatloaf is moist and covered in bacon. Onions sauteed on top. It's fantastic. The barbecue sauce is sticky and rich. Just wrap all the potatoes in it. Beautiful. So what is the first step to this meatloaf? We're gonna start with our filling. Whole eggs, tomato, some onion, carrot, ketchup, salt, peppercorns, some fresh herbs, parsley, thyme, chive, and rosemary. No remnants of vegetables left here. It's the way I like it. We fool all the kids. We have medium ground pork and beef, our mixture, panko bread crumbs. Get in there. This is a locally sourced bacon. Nice. Add some of the filling, folding the bacon over. Gorgeous. This is gonna take an hour in the oven the coffee barbecue sauce next. Tomatoes, onions, garlic, cider vinegar, sugar, molasses, allspice, and some nutmeg, and finally, coffee. That itself is fancy. Reduced for half an hour. It's ready to blend. Oh, that smells fantastic. From here, fried onion gravy, canola oil, butter, add the onions, reduced beef stock, and some chicken gravy. Now our onion gravy can just go to the side. The meatloaf is done. Oh, nice. Canola oil, some butter, building more flavor here. And we'll sear that off. Oh, beautiful color. We're ready to plate. Buttermilk mashed potatoes that we saw in the pierogi filling earlier. Farm fresh veggies, coffee barbecue sauce, meatloaf, onion gravy. This is going to be a good one. This is our bacon wrap meatloaf. Everybody, this is going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. <laughs> oh, dear. The texture is out of this world. Then you get the onions in there. Beautiful. The barbecue sauce hits with a tang and a smokiness. Oh. Meatloaf is so moist, so much flavor from all the herbs and the bacon. Nice and crispy on the outside when you yep. sear it. The fried onion gravy, there's like sweetness from the onions. And that barbecue sauce, the deepness of flavor because of that coffee in there. Wow, that's so delicious. Perfect dessert we can follow this up with is a butter tart. Let's do it. Do it again. Do it. <laughs> do it. One butter tart. The warm, gooey. Like homemade. That's your butter tart, sir. Yes, it is. It is the perfect tart. Oh. Tell me about the Barley Vine Rail Company. It's a great community spot here. Food that everybody can enjoy. And when you don't have to cook for yourself, it's even better. What gnocchi! Crisp on the outside, but they're really soft. Yeah. And this one has ricotta cheese in it. What about desserts here? I actually sent carrot cake home to my mom. That's nice. You're a good son. She loves me. Buy our s'mores pot of creme. Is it better than the s'mores you grew up on? What a hassle. This is all right here. Have to put up with mosquitoes or nothing. Nice and smooth. It's delicious. One butter tart? Oh, the butter tart's outstanding. The warm, gooey. Flaky, holds that filling really well. And it has a cranberry puree. Oh, it is the perfect tart. I want that. Well, let's make it. OK, we're going to make the filling right now. Brown sugar, corn syrup, maple syrup for flavor. Eggs, salt, white vinegar, and vanilla paste. Just add some butter while it's running. Yeah, that vanilla, gorgeous. We are going to fill some tart shells. They've been par-baked and are coming out of the oven. So then how did we get here? We made our pastry and put these little blind baking beans in there to weigh them down, filling into our sauce gun. You can pour that directly into my mouth. Okay, oh, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> Back in the oven, 10 to 12 minutes. Nice. 
We're gonna make a cranberry puree. I've got some sugar and water. Waiting for this to start to caramelize. Cream to make caramel sauce. Cranberries, beautiful color. We're ready to puree. Oh, I like that. Puree is now ready. Butter tarts come out of the oven. Bit of cranberry puree, warm butter tart, and candied pecans. That's your butter tart, sir. Yes, it is. Mm. Taste explosion in my mouth. The cranberry takes down that sweetness that you'd expect with a butter tart. The crust is delicious. It's so flaky, it's perfect. Oh! <laughs> the tart itself is so buttery, so flaky. The filling just got that gorgeous vanilla flavor, but it's not crazy overly sweet. And then you're gonna do a little bit of the cranberry there. Mmm, you got the tart and the cranberries, the sweetness from the caramel. That's a good way to end a meal. Fantastic. Right there. The only thing better than a bite of a butter tart, what's that? Is a second bite of the butter tart. <laughs> Tell them you gotta eat here. You, you gotta, gotta eat, eat here. here. Senator is Toronto's oldest diner. Real comfort food taken up a notch. Well, yeah. Okay. I can, extra small? No comment. <laughs> The Senator is Toronto's oldest restaurant. This place is a landmark. They've been serving up inspired diner food for generations. Classic breakfasts, a quick weekday lunch, or dinner before the show. Before the show, dinner is the show. You gotta eat here. Always can count on consistent, good diner food. It's comfort food, but yet dinerish, but taken up a notch. It's always gonna taste good, and you're always gonna leave happy. Club sandwich up. It's a whole chicken breast, lettuce, tomato, chicken. Everything's just so fresh, really crispy and delicious. Nice. Meatloaf up. I didn't think I liked meatloaf. It blew my mind. It's the spicing. It's delicious. Cheeseburger up. I love the Senator burger. It's a basic burger, but it's got everything in it that you need. Bacon, cheese, onions, and mushrooms. Then you got a side of caramelish. Sweet corn done in the vinegar dressing. The perfect complement to the burger. So what's the first dish we're making today? We're gonna make the senator burger with bacon, mushrooms, and cheddar cheese. First step is to make the corn relish. You start with fresh corn, cabbage, rainbow bell pepper, the mustard seed, white vinegar, sugar, chopped parsley, a little bit of flour, thicken it up. We simmer that for 10 minutes. Nice. Put that aside to cool. Now okay. we're gonna make the burger, ground beef, ground onion, celery, chili sauce, egg, salt and pepper. Mix that up. Okay, I can, extra small? No, they're medium, no comment. <laughs> Mix it well, half of that into a patty and on the paper. Okay, let me take these off. I have no feelings in my hands. <laughs> Adding the mushrooms, the bacon, and caramelized onions. Burger's looking good. Pump the bun. We're gonna assemble it now. Burger, caramelized onions, oh, yeah. mushrooms, aged cheddar cheese, and the salamander. We can drop our fries. Those are russet potatoes, they're hand cut in house. Burger bun on the plate. Look at that cheese melting nice. Crispy bacon on top. Add that onto the bun. Fries are done. Salt. Senator burger with fries and the corn relish. Mm, it's juicy, crispy bacon, melted cheese. Nothing says diner like that. The corn relish? I will eat this now. Oh, jeez. Mm. That's a yummy burger, a man. Juicy burger. Oh, wow. You got a nice little crunch on the flat top. And then so juicy, so tender on the inside. The caramelized onions are so sweet. And then you get that pop of the corn kernels from the, the corn relish. That's a really great burger, dude. Just a wonderful palette of flavors. The Senator is Toronto. Very retro feel. And it isn't retro. It's been here that long. That's how great it is. Mac and cheese up. It's creamy, cheesy. It's got a little bit of crunch with the breadcrumbs. Chili dog up. Hot mess of comfort food. This is Kobe beef. Probably a whole bowl of chili on top yes. of this, and then a pound of cheese. Almost impossible to eat, but it's worth trying. I love this place. The staff here are warm, friendly. This feels like home when you come here. Western up. It's healthy with the chopped vegetables in it. It's got your egg, it's got your ham. It comes with the home fries, which are delicious. Toasted, awesome, delicious. There's more food coming. Next, we're gonna do a toasted Western sandwich. We're gonna roast peppers right on the open flame. We'll take them off into an ice bath. Skin off. Helps to remove the skin, yeah. cools them off so we can handle them. We'll dice these. Okay, now we're gonna make the omelet. Butter, peppers, ham, roasted red onion. Start the home fries. Blanched, a little bit of onion and salt, pepper, four eggs. Put the toast down. I'll flip it. Whoa, perfect. Home fries, toasted wheat. A big sandwich. Cut it in half. There you go. Toasted Western sandwich. It just really hits the spot. The toast is done just right, crispy, but then it goes soft and you get right into the fluffy scrambled egg center. It definitely tastes the roasted pepper, ham, the onion. So good. Mm. Eggs are done perfectly. A nice big yeah. chunks of ham too. The peppers really play. They're nice and sweet. And now one of your beautiful potatoes. Yeah, classic home fries, so delicious. I'm happy right now. You've been coming to the Senator for many years? About 20. 10 years? Fairly new. Recommended by a friend. Best recommendation ever. Liver up. 
What do you have in front of you, sir? I've got liver, onions, bacon. It's nice and tender. I could live on that. This is the chocolate bourbon cake. They make it here with so much love. Nice dark chocolate. The ganache on the outside, that's where you really taste of the bourbon. Strawberries and the chantilly cream. It's so good. Fried chicken up. This is the best fried chicken I've ever had. Yeah. Super crispy, but really moist on the inside. The gravy's really nice, homemade. Potatoes are buttery, delicious. It's just like Sunday dinner. The last dish will be buttermilk fried chicken with country gravy. We have chicken bone and thigh that's been brined in water, salt, and vinegar. And brined for how long? 30 minutes. That's onion, carrot, and celery. Chicken stock, put it in the oven, 235 degrees for an hour and a half. Now we're going to make the gravy. Take a little bit of bacon fat, onions, and celery. What is that? Breakfast sausage. Is that what country gravy is? Has sausage in it? Yes. A little bit of flour. Just making a roux now. Chicken stock, heavy cream. While this is cooking, we can take the chicken out of the oven. Ooh, hot. Cools in the liquid to retain its moisture. We'll finish the gravy. All right. Hot sauce, salt and pepper, and a couple drops of coffee. What, what? Nothing. Next, mashed potatoes. Those are russet potatoes. It's like a... It's like a... <laughs> Little salt and pepper, cream and butter. Okay. You can mix that in with the spoon. Oh, thank you. Oh, they look good. Next, we fry the chicken. Chicken is cooled. Now we'll bread the chicken from seasoned flour. Seasoned with what? Salt and pepper. And from there into the buttermilk and egg, back into the flour. Now we get a nice double coating. Into the deep fryer for eight minutes. Then you can eat. Okay, good. I'm starving. Chicken's done. Okay. And plate the dish. Mashed potatoes. Oh, that looks good. Country gravy. And there you go. The buttermilk fried chicken with mashed potatoes and country gravy. Oh my god. Crunchy on the outside, but on the inside it's juicy and tender. Gravy is just like homemade. I could drink it. Cheers. Cut, dip, manja. Hi. That's beautiful fried chicken. It's so juicy. From the brining and then from the chicken stock itself, just adds so much flavor right inside the chicken. It's so nice and crispy. The double dredge. And that gravy's got so much flavor. That little hit of the hot sauce cuts the richness of the cream. The mashed potatoes are just perfect. That's a great, great dish. I'm gonna lick this whole plate. It's plate licking good. That's what this chicken is. You gotta eat here.